This film is brought to you by New York Life and its over 11,000 agents and representatives who offer you quality financial products and services to help you get the most out of life. For the Indianapolis Colts, 1988 got off to a stormy start that dampened their hopes of repeating as AFC Eastern Division champions. With five losses in the first six weeks, four of them by less than a touchdown, the Colts' season threatened to spin out of control. In a difficult schedule, the toughest foe was adversity as offensive tackles Chris Hinton and Kevin Call were hobbled by injuries, and starting quarterback Jack Trudeau was sidelined with a knee injury. But in the face of hard luck and heartbreak, the Colts never gave in or gave up. By mid-October, they hit a winning stride showing a renewed spirit that enabled them to shove disappointment aside in resounding fashion. Stat right, 872 wide drive on three. Huh? Right on three. Oh, oh. Let's get it in there. 15. The Colts were a determined squad throughout 1988. The Colts' determination soon helped them leave opponents in the dust. Indianapolis's 8-2 record over the season's last 10 weeks was the NFL's best mark during this period. While the Indianapolis Colts failed to make the playoffs, their scintillating finish was positive proof that they had passed a test of character. Owner Robert Ursay has committed himself to building one of pro football's soundest franchises, as indicated by the hiring of Ron Meyer as head coach in 1986. Meyer has already won 60% of the games he has coached in Indianapolis and has created a team that reflects his image of success. I'd like to envision our team as a smart team, a team that doesn't beat itself, a team that is going to play extremely hard every single down, a team that has and shows great character. Contributing to that character in 1988 were several first-year Colts, such as rookie quarterback Chris Chandler. While Chandler and newly acquired receiver Clarence Verdant put points on the board, newcomers on defense put opponents on their backs. Linebacker Fred Young, who arrived in a deal with Seattle, and free agent nose tackle Joe Klecko, number 73, provided the Colts with former Pro Bowl performers at key positions. Young, number 56, is an aggressive, rangy run stuffer who is certain to make his presence felt in seasons ahead. A pair of rookie linebackers also showed promise during 1988. Number 97, O'Brien Alston, an unheralded 10th round draft choice, and number 54, Jeff Harrod, a 9th round selection. These first year Colts became proficient at chasing the enemy down. And the Colts also boasted a return specialist receiver who few foes could catch. Line drive kick, it'll be Clarence Verdant who feels it at the 28, cuts to the far side, looking for a block, cuts back to the 40, he's at the 45, he's at 50, he could go, 45, 40, 35, 30, Lee Johnson chasing him, he'll never get him, Clarence Verdant, a touchdown! Verdant's receiving repertoire included a furious finishing kick and fancy footwork worthy of Gregory Hines. Chandler, a 
Weir comes in motion near side, back to throw. Sets up, throws one deep, intended for Verdant. Clarence is there, touchdown! While Clarence wasn't shy in the spotlight, Chris Chandler was forced into it. But when he replaced an injured Jack Trudeau on a Monday night against Cleveland, he responded with a 54-yard completion on his first series as a pro. Chandler went on to start in all nine Indianapolis victories. Although he was forced to learn on the job, Chandler threw eight scoring passes and ran for three touchdowns. Chandler takes it. Thanks to Dickerson, drops the throw, rolls away from traffic, gets to the right, he's got it open! He's at the 30, he's at the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Chris Chandler! Confident, competitive Chris Chandler typified the Colts' new breed. And in week seven, he helped ignite the first of five straight wins. A 35-31 triumph over Tampa Bay also featured a pair of Eric Dickerson touchdowns and a big defensive play. Long count again as Chandler drops the throw, gives it to Dickerson up the middle, cuts outside, he's at the 20, he's at the 50, cuts to the 10, he's at the 5, touchdown Eric Dickerson! Testaverde drops the throw, has time, sets up, looks, throws one over the middle, intercepted by Daniel 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! This victory demonstrated that for the Colts, there's no place like the Dome. During 1988, the Colts sold out seven of eight contests at the Hoosier Dome, where they boast a current six-game winning streak. The Dome was the kind of place where you might see John Cougar Mellencamp. And a rock legend of the past was sighted on a Halloween Monday night that inaugurated the season's second half. An all-time record crowd included some imaginative costumes, and on the field, Eric Dickerson appeared in his usual guise of Superman. Against Denver, number 29 established a new club standard with four touchdowns in the first half. Chandler gives the ball inside to Dickerson. Dickerson squeezes out the first down. He scores! Eric Dickerson up the middle. Makes it drop straight back. Gives to Dickerson off the right side. Trying to get outside at the 10. He's at the 5. Touchdown, Eric Dickerson! Chandler will give to Dickerson off the left side. Cuts up the middle. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Dickerson was given a well-earned rest, but the fast-paced tempo of this Halloween thrill show never subsided. Hogan back to throw. He's going to air it out down the right side. It's headed for Billy Brooks. Billy got it. He's at the 20. Touch back inside. Oh, my. Billy Brooks. Billy Brooks on a 53-yard reception. Albert Bentley's touchdown climaxed a 55-23 run that offered persuasive evidence that the Colts had engineered a dramatic turnaround. The difficult first six weeks of 1988 could have left the Colts crawling with uncertainty. But by mid-season, they were standing tall, an indication that this was a mature squad. Of course, babyface place kicker Dean Biasucci may never look like a grown-up, and punter Ron Stark still resembles the boy next door. But given their considerable abilities, these are two specialists who are looked up to by their peers. In 1988, Stark was fourth ranked in the NFL in average yards per punt. The Colts' kicking game was also blessed with another long distance leg, as Biasucci established a new league record by booting six field goals from 50 yards or beyond. Biasucci's ability to withstand pressure made his best season as a pro seem like a no sweat affair. Linebacker Dwayne Bickett's specialty was applying pressure. Number 50 excelled at shaking off lockers, then shaking down skilled players. Bickett led the Colts in tackles for the second consecutive season. This tenacious competitor spearheaded the AFC's second best rushing defense while helping the Colts post the highest total of fumble recoveries in the AFC.
In just four seasons, Dwayne Bickett has become the leader of the Colts defense, a unit that was also propelled by a solid nucleus of experienced athletes. Linebackers Barry Krause and Cliff Odom, number 93, possess a combined 18 years of search and destroy service. Like Odom, defensive end Donnell Thompson, number 99, is a savvy veteran, capable of disrupting an enemy offense. And John Hand, number 78, in his third campaign with the Colts, emerged as the bulwark of the defensive line. 1988 saw Hand lead the team in sacks, and he is certain to be a key figure in the Colts' plans to improve their pass rush next season. The Colts will also seek to shore up their pass defense, and backs such as Chris Good, number 37, provide a sound foundation for the future. Good helped the Colts come out on the plus side in turnover ratio, as did Eugene Daniel and Willie Tullis. Number 42, Tullis, led the team in interception. And he was equally adept at causing interruptions, a quality also demonstrated by hard-working, hard-nosed Mike Pryor, number 39. Pryor topped the Indianapolis secondary in passes defense and total tackles. The work ethic embodied by Mike Pryor and the Colts defensive veterans was also evident in the team's experienced receiving core. Number 85, Matt Booza's personal signature as a wide receiver, can be detected in his ability to produce clutch receptions in the most difficult situations. In 1988, Booza tied Clarence Verdan for the club lead in touchdown catches. While Booza combined with tight ends Mark Boyer and Pat Beach to form a dependable trio of possession receivers, versatile Bill Brooks was equally effective on underneath patterns and deep routes. I think if I had one favorite athlete, it would have to be Bill Brooks because he works so hard at making himself better. And he's extremely gifted now. He studies, he works. He, to me, would be a throwback to, I, I would envision what Raymond Berry was as a receiver as far as his preparation prior to the game. Then you add to that all the God-given talents of great leaping skills, great judgment, great eye-hand coordination. Billy Brooks just continues to amaze me. He is the epitome of class, both on and off the field. This class act led the Colts in receptions and receiving yardage. Bill Brooks did his best work leaping in the air, and he owed much of his success to the men who did their best work laboring in the trenches. 1988 marked a period of transition for the Colts offensive line, yet this unit consistently displayed power and promise. They have a lot of potential on that offensive line with uh, Chris Hen, Ray Donaldson, Ben Hutt, Randy Dixon, Joel Patton. I mean, there's a lot of potential, a lot of big guys, and I think by the time this year is out, we'll be, if not the best offensive line, one of the best offensive lines in the league. At year's end, center Ray Donaldson, number 53, and tackle Chris Hinton were voted Pro Bowl starters. Donaldson, a nine-year pro, is the anchor of the offense. We look to Ray Donaldson for leadership. We look for him to kind of show the way. I think it's significant to note that he's been the offensive captain uh, ever since he's been here. We should, we should line up and go right now. You know what I'm saying? It's old man Moe is on the outside. Where to go, young fella? Where to protect? Where to go? Where to go? I've gotten more cuts on my hands in this one half alone than I had all year. They must have blades stuck to their shoulder pads or something. <laughs> That 
Oh, sweet, huh? Real sweet. Yes, sir. Throughout 1988, Ray Donaldson established himself as the AFC's premier center. The Colts game plan featured a lot of bright ideas during 1988. Ron Meyer added punch to his offense by drawing on the element of surprise. This tackle eligible play was a neat trick that transformed lineman Brian Baldinger, number 62, into a pass catcher. The Colts frequently employed the wishbone option as a way to wind down the clock and grind down defenses. The presence of speedy Clarence Verdan made the reverse an effective gambit. Indianapolis even reached way back into the 1950s to find the old hook and lateral. Despite these unpredictable plays, the Colts' attack was centered around one man, and in Eric Dickerson's first full season as a Colt, number 29 proved that he was the most significant acquisition in franchise history. We've gone out and probably secured the most dominant player uh, in the game at his position, certainly, but maybe the most dominant player in the game today. We used to be able to sneak up on some people. Now with 29 lining up in the backfield, that's very difficult to do. The Colts continually challenge foes with one of the greatest running backs of pro football's modern era. 1988 saw Dickerson become only the fourth runner in NFL annals to lead the league in rushing four times. And he was the first Colt to top the rushing chart since 1955. Dickerson's determination, power, and graceful stride embody the essence of pro football's appeal. His silky smooth running style belies the fact that he is a tough customer who can cash in on his carries while absorbing the hardest shots. Despite his team record 388 rushing attempts, Dickerson lost only four fumbles. His 15 touchdowns were an AFC high for the season. They give us the Dickerson up the middle, cuts outside, he's at the 40, he's at the 35, he's gone. 30, 20, 10, 5, count it, touchdown Eric Dickerson. Ogie drops the throw, all out blitz, they dump it up the middle, Dickerson's got it, 45, he's at the 40, cuts to the 35, he's there he goes. He's at the 30, 25, 20, 50, 10, 5, touchdown Eric Dickerson. I think Eric Dickerson coming to, to the Indianapolis Colts has given our team a definite message that, hey, ownership, management, coaching staff has made a commitment here to do what it takes to win. That message was emphatically relayed to opponents as the Colts raced down the home stretch. In week 11, Chris Chandler victimized the Packers with two touchdown passes, and the defense registered five sacks in a 20 to 13 victory. Two weeks later against the Patriots, Dwayne Bickett was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week, and the Colts rallied for 10 fourth quarter points to overtake New England 24 to 21. After number 84, Mark Boyer's scoring reception tied the contest, Dean Biasucci's field goal with a little over two minutes remaining provided the margin of victory. The Colts' ability to get the jump on foes may not have seemed well choreographed, but every player was in sync with each other, and the team possessed the unmistakable look of a winner. Week 14 saw Indianapolis complete a season sweep of the Dolphins with a 31-28 win. A team that had stumbled at the start was now in the running for a playoff berth. But with a chance to grab hold of destiny, the Colts let it slip from their grasp. A mistake marred 34 to 16 loss to the Jets left Indianapolis with only the slimmest of postseason hopes. Now it was a matter of mathematics. 
as tiebreakers would determine the wild card spot that the Colts coveted. On the season's final weekend, New England and Cleveland would have to lose, while the Colts had a must-win appointment with the AFC East champion Buffalo Bills. Facing overwhelming odds and a favored opponent, the Colts found themselves confronting their toughest test of character of the year. This game would offer a microcosm of the season as Indianapolis struggled early against the conference's best defense. In the fourth quarter, the Bills assumed a 14-3 lead, but with New England defeated and Cleveland losing, the Colts suddenly came to life. Gary Hogeboom relieved an injured Chris Chandler and engineered an 80-yard scoring drive that narrowed the deficit to 14 to 10. Hogeboom rolls right, looks, fires to the end zone, touchdown, Bills! Hogeboom then directed an 80-yard march that highlighted Eric Dickerson at his best. With 118 left to play, the Colts assured themselves of consecutive winning seasons for the first time since 1977. Hogeboom takes the snap, drops the throw, fires to the sideline, Bentley's at the five, Bentley, he scores! Bentley, he scores! He scores! The Colts are taking the lead! This 17-14 victory had defined the makeup of the 1988 Indianapolis Colts. The Colts did not make the playoffs, but they can look forward to the future with confidence thanks to a season in which they passed a test of character. This video is part of a complete blockbuster lineup of NFL films capturing pro football's greatest plays and biggest heroes with crunches, follies, highlights, and Super Bowl hits, plus new releases each season. We've got action-packed videos of every superstar team in the NFL. Call 1-800-NFL-TAPE now for a free catalog and order your NFL hit today. Or look for NFL films at your nearby video store. The season's never over with NFL Films and Fox Hills Video.